Welcome everyone. Let's dockerize a Node.js app in under 5 minutes. I'm going to start by using the makedir command to create a new directory called docker. I'm going to change into that directory with cd docker. I'm going to initialize an npm project without having to manually provide all the values that npm asks me. So I'm going to run npm init y. Next, I'm going to open the packageJSON file that was created by npm init and switch the type to module so that I can use the ECMAScript modules for import and export. I'm going to create an app.js file that will host my application code. Let's create a very simple Node.js server. I'm going to import the HTTP native module I'm going to use the create server method to pass a callback function and then use the response.end method to actually respond with a simple text to the client connecting to our server. Next, I'm going to listen on port 8080 and I'm going to run a callback function to show something on the terminal when the server starts listening on this port. I'm going to open up the package.json file and create a script for running this server using the npm run start command. Now I'm going to create a docker file that will be used to create the docker image. This line specifies the base image for our new image. In this case, we're using the official Node Alpine image, which is a lightweight Node.js image. The run instruction will execute any commands to create a new layer on top of the current image. The added layer is used in the next step in the Docker file. The workd instruction sets the working directory for any run, CMD, entry point, copy, and add instructions that follow it in the Docker file. The source app folder is where we'll be copying our application files in the image. This line copies the package.json file in our current directory to the working directory of the image. That's the src app directory. The copy instruction copies new files or directories and adds them to the file system of the image at the path destination. I'm going to instruct docker to run the npm install command which will subsequently read the package.json and install all the node modules that are required. I'm going to copy all the files from the current directory to the working directory of the image. I'm using the expose instruction that informs Docker that the container listens on the specified network ports at runtime. I'm going to use port 8080. The cmd instruction sets the command to be executed when running a container from an image. In this case, I'm going to run the npm start command. Next, I'm going to save the docker file and head over to the terminal and build the docker image from the docker file. I'm going to run the docker build command. I'm going to supply a docker image name with a dash t command. In this case, it would be named node.js. And I'm going to use the dot symbol to indicate that the build command will read the docker file from the current directory. Let's see whether this docker image was actually built and is part of the list. Now it's time to run the docker container based on the docker image. I'm going to run the docker run command and supply the dash d short for detach option, which is going to run the container in the background and print the container ID in the console. The dash p or publish option is going to publish a container's port to the host. In this case, I'm publishing the port 8080 from the container port to the host port 8080. So both the container port and the host port that I'm using here are the same, but I could change the port of either the host or the container. I'm going to run docker ps to see whether there's a container running. I'm 
I'm going to use the container ID and the docker stop command to actually stop the running container. Next, I'm going to delete the containers and the images that I've just created. I'm going to run the command docker images to see the images that I have created. I'm going to run docker image rm along with the image id to remove this image. As you can see, there is a container, a stopped container that is based on this image. So docker doesn't allow me to delete this container. So I have to run docker ps-a to show all the containers, both the running and the stop containers. Then use the docker rm with the container ID to remove the container, in this case, the stopped container. And now I will be able to remove the image since there are no containers based on that image. Running docker image rm along with the ID of the image clears the image from the docker's list. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe and leave a comment below. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.